Shalom. Greetings. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Today, uh, we are actually going to start a new series in the first book of the Kings. Now, last year, we went through First and Second Solomon, uh, which I really enjoyed going through that study. A lot of interesting stories about David and and all of that. And I wanted to go right from that to Kings, but we just didn't get around to it. And so we're going to go ahead and start that series uh, this morning by reading the first chapter out of First Kings. So this series will be based on First and Second Kings. Now let me give you a little background here. First Kings, I mean, this is a historical, bu- historical book, uh, and it records the death of David, the reign of Solomon, the building of the temple, the death of Solomon, the division of the kingdom under Rehoboam and Jeroboam, the history of the two kingdoms, to reign, to the reign of Jeram over Judah, Ahazah over Samaria, and it also includes the mighty ministry of the prophet Elijah. So there's some really wild and interesting stories that take place in the kings that uh, I think are really going to... Um, be interesting for us to study out uh, as we work through this series. Now, if you'll remember, you know, in Samuel, we basically get the whole story of David and how he comes about and how he comes to the kingdom. He makes the choice with Bathsheba, right? And then Nathan the prophet approaches him and says, the sword will never leave your house. And he spends time running from his own son, Absalom, and then Absalom is killed and just a drama. Well, even up to David's death, the sword doesn't leave his house. Um, because he, even in his final moments of life, he still has one more, like, kind of little tussle to deal with. And that is, uh, and, you know, he, 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 he wants to leave the kingdom to Solomon. Uh, but one of his other sons decides to kind of try to take advantage of the fact uh, that David is kind of in a sickbed and try to appoint himself as king. And so that's kind of the story we're dealing with this morning uh, in chapter 1. Uh, but it ultimately ends with Solomon taking over the throne. And so that's kind of how our story will start this morning and then move forward for the next few, few chapters. The next few weeks will be the reign of Solomon. So there's kind of some background for you and I just pray that you'll uh, be blessed by this study and you know the historical stuff is super interesting we've been through the Torah portions almost three times now um, we've been through uh, first and second Samuel and but we're still missing a really big chunk of of the history of Israel by not getting through the kings and through chronicles and things like that so that's what we're going to start doing as of this morning With that backdrop, let's begin. I'm going to read from the King James Bible, first book of Kings, chapter 1. Verse 1. Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord, the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel, and found Abishag, a Shumanite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair, and cherished the king, and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. All right, right out of the gate. Because people try to make this into something that's not. This is not a sexual thing or a perverse thing. They didn't have heated blankets, unfortunately, during those times. So they sought a young girl to help keep the king warm. And the Bible goes out of its way to make sure you don't misinterpret this. uh, In verse 4 by saying, But the king knew her not. Uh, So that's all that's going on there. It's just making, it's just the story is just trying to point out to you that David's kind of at the end, you know, to the point where he's got to, they got to bring in a young damsel to help keep him warm, you know. 
that's kind of where he's at. Now we get to the part where Adonijah starts plotting to seize the kingdom. Verse 5. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggath, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. Please note, one of the problems here is, as he's starting to do this, David doesn't do anything to correct him. Right? He doesn't say, Why are you doing this? Or stop doing this. As the Bible says, His father had not displeased him at any time, saying, Why hast thou done so? Verse 7. And he conferred with Joab the son of Zeriah, and with Abithar the priest, and they following Adonijah helped him. But Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zohilath which is by in Rogel, and called all his brethren, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servant. But Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, and the mighty men, and Solomon his brother, he called not. Wherefore Nathan spake to both Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah the son of Haggith doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not? Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thy own life and the life of thy son Solomon. Go and get thee into King David and say unto him, Didst thou not, did, did not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thy handmaid, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Why then does Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee, and confirm thy words. And Bathsheba went into the, unto the king, into the chamber, and the king was very old, and Abishag the Shumanite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed, and did abstinence to the king. And the king said, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, My lord, Thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thy handmaid, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth. And now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not, and he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the sons of the king, and Abithar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant hath he not called. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of Israel are open to thee, that thou should tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my lord, the king, shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. And lo, while he yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet... And when he was coming before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he has gone out this day, and hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the king's sons and the captains of the host, and the Bithar the priest, and behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save Adonijah. But me, even me, thy servant, and Zadok, the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, hath he not called? Is this thing done by my lord the king? And thou hast not showed it unto thy servant, or who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then David answered, and he said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Okay, real quick, just, uh, let's just kind of rehash here. 
Nathan and Bathsheba come up with this plan where Bathsheba is going to come in and say, Hey, didn't you say that my son Solomon was going to be on the throne? And yet Adonijah is now sitting on the throne. And then Nathan says, while you're talking, I'm going to come in with the same information. Now, this plan that they've hashed out, it's not like it's lies, right? They're coming in and they're telling the truth. But they've put this kind of plan together, and it's not a manipulative thing. You know, the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, that we are out, that he has sent us forth like sheep in a mist of wolves. Therefore, we need to be wise as serpents while still being harmless as doves. Jesus also tells the parable in the chapter of uh, Luke 16 about the shrewd uh, servant, right? Who thinks, oh, he's he gets himself in some kind of issue. His master's going to fire him. So he puts his plot together and he goes to all the people that owe money and all the debtors and he cuts their debt in half to gain favor with them and all that. And Jesus tells this story. It almost seems like this like unrighteous uh, you know, thing. But the point of the story is that we have to be shrewd because the world is shrewd yet we need to do it in a we need to be shrewd and wise in a way that's also not ungodly right but so many christians they lack that shrewdness that wisdom um and they just get devoured right by the world because they don't understand that concept well nathan does the prophet nathan he does understand that concept very very well and so he conjures up this plan, and they go to David. Uh, but it's for the good, right? It's for what's right. Uh, but you got to be wise, and you got to, you know, Nathan is playing that political game because he doesn't really have a choice. Otherwise, Nathan and Bathsheba and Solomon, who's supposed to be the king, they're all going to end up executed, right? When, if uh, if this is not dealt with, so. Back to verse 28. Then King David answered, and he said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore, and he said, As the Lord liveth, that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress, even I, as I swear unto thee by the Lord thy God of Israel, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my lord king David live forever. And king David said, Call me Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Benaiah the son of Jehida. And they came before the king. And the king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your lord and cause Solomon my son to ride upon my mule and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there king over Israel. And blow ye with the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. Then ye shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne. For he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel, over Judah. And over Judah. And Benaiah the son of Jehida answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of of my lord the king, say so too. And as the Lord hath been with my lord the king, even so be he with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my lord king David. And Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehida, and the Cherhites and the Pethelites went down and caused Solomon to ride upon king David's mule, and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok the priest took a horn, of oil of the tabernacle when anointed Solomon and they blew the trumpet and all the people said God save King Solomon and all the people came up after him and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy so that the earth rent with the sound of them and Adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they made an end of eating when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar? And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abithar, the priest, came. 
And Adonijah said unto him, Come in, for thou art a valiant man, and bring us good tidings. And Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, Verily our lord King David hath made Solomon king. And the king hath sent him with Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the sons of Jehida, and the Cherhites, and the Pethelites, and they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule. And Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, have anointed him king in Gihon. And they have come up from thence rejoicing, so that the city rang again. This is the noise that you have heard. And also Solomon sitting on the throne of the king. And moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord David, saying, God, make the name of Solomon better than thy name, and make his throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. And also thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which hath given one to sit on my throne this day, my eyes even seeing it. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid, and rose up and went every man his way. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon. And he rose and he went and he caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah feareth King Solomon, for lo, he hath caught hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me this day that he will not slay his servant with the sword. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not a hair of him fall to the earth, but if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and he bowed himself to King Solomon, and Solomon said unto him, Go to thy house. And that, my friends, is the first chapter in the book of Kings, and it sets the stage for how Solomon came unto the throne. And, of course, it was not without a little turmoil and a little trouble. I think you're going to find this study really, really interesting, especially if you've never really done an official study in the book of Kings, because there's so much uh, history about Israel that is going to come to light for us, and the, the two-kingdom issue, and uh, Elijah, and just some really amazing uh, stories. I want to thank you for tuning in this morning. Thank you for supporting the podcast. You can do that by going to scriptureandprophecy.com. There's a support and donate tab there at the top with all that information. Thank you for your prayers, and I pray that you've been blessed. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, God bless.